Hello, Hello church. church. Hello, Hello church. church. Hello, 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 church. Hello everyone. We're going to continue our messages from the Gospel of Mark chapter 1. We took a couple of weeks, one, to look at Satan and understand more about him because in this first chapter we find some times when Jesus is casting out demons and their leader is Satan. Uh, that's still the case for the verses we'll look at today. Satan has been defeated. And then last week we looked at Jesus, the one who has defeated Satan. And let's get back to the narrative of the Gospel of Mark in chapter 1. We're going to start in verse 29 and uh, probably go down to verse 45. A little longer passage than I normally look at, but I will just comment uh, briefly on some of those sections. And I'll just read those as we come to them. First of all, I want to tell you that Jesus has power over sickness and has defeated the devil. Now we've said that part of that point uh, in the past many times and it's still true and we need to hear it again. Jesus has power over sickness and he has defeated the devil and the devil's demons. Verses 29 and 31, let me read those. Immediately after they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon, it's, this is Simon Peter. Now Simon's mother-in-law was lying sick with a fever and they immediately spoke to Jesus about her. And he came and raised her up, taking her by the hand and the fever left her and she served them. It was instant healing. One vivid detail in the story is the way that this healed woman showed her love showed her gratitude to Jesus. You see, she at once, in a very practical way, began to serve the Lord Jesus. She fed him, as well as a dozen hungry disciples. Now, not everyone can preach. Not all uh, can uh, do different kinds of ministries, but everyone can love and serve in some way. Verse 32, now when evening came after the sun had set, they began bringing to him, to Jesus, all who were ill and those who were demon-possessed. And the whole city had gathered at the door, and he healed many who were ill of various diseases and cast out many demons. He would not permit the demons to speak because they knew who, who he was. And the reason they knew who he was is because these demons are former angels. They've been in heaven with the Lord. 
but they rebelled and followed the rebellious leadership of Satan and they were cast out. Well, the Bible says the whole town gathered at the door and Jesus healed many people, of diseases and cast out demons. So everyone in the, the town of Capernaum knew that Jesus was there. He was in town. The exorcism in verse 26 and the healings in verse 31 were not isolated cases. He had done it before and he's going to do it again. By the way, Mark distinguishes between ordinary illnesses and demon possession. They are not the same. Sometimes demon possession is uh, attributed to mental illness, uh, perhaps in some cases, but uh, Mark sees that they are two different things, illness and demon possession. Jesus could handle both very uh, well and easily. Jesus also continued not to let those demons speak uh, because they knew who he was. And he wanted to show by word and deed what kind of Messiah he was. Jesus would be the one to proclaim who he was, not the demons. It's uh, amazing to me through the years when I have uh, selected a passage of scripture or a topic to uh, look at and preach about or teach about, and uh, if, if I'm uh, reading someone else, uh, someone else's book, or if I'm watching a, a video of a worship service, I'm amazed how many times that they speak to the same topic, the same verse sometimes that I had already selected. And as I had planned this uh, some time ago, moving through this passage of scripture, just this week, I saw a couple of devotions by David Jeremiah relating to Satan and how uh, he has been overcome. And so I want to share a little bit of a couple of those uh, devotions. Uh, I think what's going on, I learned this from Henry Blackaby many years ago, that God usually doesn't just tell one person something. Usually he will tell more than one person because he wants his action to be carried out. He wants more than just one person to know something. And uh, there are times in this, uh, this last year or so, as I've watched more videos of worship services, I'll see where uh, a mega church pastor preached on the same passage that I had preached on uh, maybe a month before or sometimes even a week or so before. God is speaking to his people. Let's look at uh, this little uh, devotion by uh, David Jeremiah. Uh, he titled it, Air Pollution. Colossians 1.13, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Over the power of darkness. During COVID-19, many people began wearing masks but one firm went a step further. They developed an air purifying helmet that looks like it was developed for an astronaut, cost about $400. People could walk around like a moon explorer with 360 degree protection and built in air purifying system. Well, in a spiritual sense, Satan is called the prince of the power of the air in Ephesians 2.2. And he poisons the atmosphere wherever he is. He pollutes our minds. He pollutes the media. He pollutes our entire planet. But God has a system for protecting his children and purifying the air around us. He covers us with the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. He provides the helmet of salvation. And into our lungs, we have the atmosphere of heaven. Our Savior has delivered us from the power of darkness and con conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. The devil might uh, try to tempt us. He might try us, test us. He might oppress us. He might even defeat us sometimes. But when we're clothed with Christ, we're under divine protection. That's a breath of fresh air. Charles Stanley, retired pastor, said, when we fill our minds with Scripture and live according to its principles, Satan's schemes lose their power over us. 
Another verse, 1 John 4, 4, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. So we have overcome Satan. We need to be ready for spiritual battle though. Jesus had it and he won every time and we also can win spiritual batters battles we submit to God we resist the devil as James 4 7 and he will flee from us John Knox a Scottish theologian in the 1500 said I fear not the tyranny of man neither yet what the devil can invent against me we don't have to be afraid of the devil Jesus has defeated him number two Jesus valued time in prayer Verses uh, 31, 35 to 37. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, 35. And in the early morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up. He left the house and went away to a secluded place and prayed there for a time. Simon and his command, companions eagerly searched for him, and they found him and said to him, Everyone's looking for you. Well, the events up to this point had been happening rapidly, uh, coming one after another. And those events had also been emotionally and spiritually draining on the Lord Jesus Christ, exhausting to him. The humanity of Jesus is evident here. He got up and went to a solitary place and he prayed. Now that solitary place was not just away from the crowds, he was away from the disciples as well. He was alone and wanted to be alone. One writer said even Jesus had to recharge his batteries and he did it by withdrawing from those crowds and talking with the heavenly father. It was a time of renewal, a time of preparation for Jesus. He knew the, the blessing of prayer. Jesus knew the power of prayer. He valued that time in prayer with the heavenly father. Two other times in Gospel of uh, Mark, we see Jesus getting away to pray in uh, chapter 6 and chapter 14. And all three of these special times of prayer, all three, Jesus is preparing for a crisis, preparing for something that's difficult. Each one is at night. And all are times of tension, crucial moments in the life of Jesus. We need to do the same thing. We need to pull away from the world, pull away from other people, spend time with the Lord in prayer so that we're prepared for the, the, the things of this world. Now, Simon, Simon Peter and the others seem to think that Jesus was making a big mistake here. He's losing an opportunity. He's got some publicity going. Now let's keep milking that. They thought the crowds uh, should see more miracles. Well, that's what the crowds wanted. Well, this was not the last time uh, that Simon's thoughts would be human thoughts instead of God's. Jesus refused to be sought out as a mere miracle worker. He wanted to be recognized as a savior. Verse 38, he said to them, let's go somewhere else to the towns nearby so that I may also preach there for this is why I came. And he went into their synagogues preaching throughout Galilee and still casting out demons. Now Jesus had this desire to go to the nearby villages and showed his desire not just to be a popular miracle worker. He is reiterating his purpose, preach the gospel, preach the good news. That's why he came. Matthew Henry said, wherever Jesus uh, comes, he comes to do good. And he wants us to know the good news. He came to preach, and that's what he did. Now, the primary mission of Jesus was to preach the good news. The miracles of healing, the casting out of demons, that was secondary. They were just a means of, of presenting the gospel and getting people to respond to the good news of Jesus. And the driving out of those demons... Well, that was fundamental because it affected the soul of those individuals that were demon-possessed. Bodily healing, that just prolonged their life. 
So that was more temporary in, in my mind. Number three, Jesus was a person of active compassion. Verses 40 to 45 of the Gospel of Mark chapter 1 is the story of healing a leper. Let's read that as Mark records it. And a man with leprosy came to Jesus, imploring him and kneeling down, saying to him, If you're willing, you can make me clean. Moved with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. And he sternly warned him and immediately sent him away. And he said, see that you say nothing to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded as a testimony to them. But he that healed leper, he went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the news around to such an extent that Jesus could no longer publicly enter a city, but stayed out in the unpopulated area. And they were coming to him from everywhere. Verse 40, that word uh, leprosy was used in biblical times to designate actually a wide variety of skin diseases. Leprosy was painful. It made the, the uh, sick person very weak. Leviticus 13 lists uh, at least seven forms of this skin disease and describes them. And according to ceremonial law, religious law, a person with leprosy had to wear clothing that would signify he had that disease as well as shout out unclean, unclean as he's walking along and approaching people. Person with, with leprosy was not allowed to touch other people in fear that he would defile them and make them unclean. In fact, a person with leprosy was considered a walking corpse. Well, instead of that leper keeping his distance from Jesus as the law directed, <clears throat> he came directly to Jesus. He fell on his knees. He cried out for Jesus to make him clean. This man was full of faith. He did not doubt Jesus' ability to heal him, but he was not sure Jesus was willing to heal him. He didn't know about the desire of Jesus, but he's going to take the risk. Here's some things about that leper that we can learn and maybe some things we need to emulate. First of all, he was aware of his condition. What about our sin? What about our spiritual condition? We need to look at ourselves. We need to see ourselves as God sees us and make corrections as needed. Uh, again, uh, Henry Blackaby, he would say, make adjustments to your life. And he wasn't talking just about attitude adjustments. So you need to be aware of your condition. Be honest about yourself and how you need to be in your walk with the Lord. So this leper, he was very aware of his condition. He also had a, a desire to change. Sometimes people don't want to change. We have in our area lots and lots of homeless people. We had some just uh, camping out just a half block from our house until recently and the city came and uh, moved them elsewhere and cleaned uh, up the area. But I have helped uh, a number of homeless people and in talking with another pastor that had been helping the uh, same couple I had been helping, we finally found uh, out each of us were doing this. Uh, we both realized that, uh, yeah, we could take a box of food. Uh, I could take uh, a part for their uh, motor so that they had some transportation. Could help on that. But if you find something that's more long-term help, like a job, some kind of training program. They weren't interested in that. And the, the ongoing help just, uh, just seemed like it was uh, just for temporary things and they really were not willing to change. This leper was. He wanted to change, he wanted a better life. And he was also humble enough to ask for help. He believed Jesus had the power to heal. So we need to be humble and come to Jesus and believe. 
verses 41 and 42, Jesus expressed his compassion for that leper by touching him. Lepers, as I mentioned, could not have contact with anyone. Most people, if they had the power to heal, they would have healed the man first and then touched him, not Jesus. He knew the man had not felt human touch in a very long time, so he reached out to touch the man first. Now, Jesus didn't have to touch him to heal. There are times when Jesus just spoke the word and someone was healed. There are times when Jesus healed someone and he was not even in the, the same community. But he reached out and touched that man. By touching him, Jesus revealed an attitude towards ceremonial law. By touching the leper, Jesus himself would become ceremonially unclean. But Jesus placed love and compassion above ritual, above regulation. Now the effect on that man of Jesus touching him must have been tremendous. Not only did Jesus risk infection, he became religiously unclean so that that man might become clean. One writer said, do you think Mark was thinking about what Jesus did on the cross as he's writing this report of the cleansing of a leper? Jesus became unclean so that that man could become clean. Well, Mark might have had the cross in mind. See, leprosy was a symbol of sin. It didn't mean that they sinned and got uh, uh, leprosy. But many people believed that, that it was a strong connection to sin. Possibly not at all, but it was a symbol of sin. A leper would have been visually offensive. He would have had an, an odor of illness. And our sin is also ugly. Our sin stinks. The Bible talks of people becoming cleansed by leprosy. It doesn't talk about them being healed or cured. And Jesus brings the cleansing of sin, the forgiveness of sin. Jesus identified with the ugliness and the stench of our sin when he was on the cross. Galatians 3, 13 says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree. Jesus hung on the tree, on that cross, for us. He took our curse on himself so that we would no longer be cursed. Now Jesus warned that man in the strongest of terms to do two things and, and that those strong terms uh, uh, you might translate strictly charged or sternly said to him. And here's those two things. Number one, go and get a health certificate from the priest. Without that, he could not re-enter society. Without that certificate, he could not join in the worship of God. And that note from the priest would also be proof that he had been healed. And showing himself to a priest would also be proof to the priest that Jesus had the power to heal. And Jesus said, uh, not only get that health certificate, but don't tell anyone what I have done for you. Stay silent. Only one you can tell, go tell a priest. Well, like many of us, we uh, think we know better than Jesus. That man thought he knew better. So he told everyone, everyone about his healing. That was disobedience, yes. But I believe it was also spontaneous expression of gratitude. The leper who was unclean, who had to tell people, unclean, unclean. Now use that voice to tell about Jesus. Now his disobedience did hinder the work of Jesus. So does our sin. So does our disobedience. We need to ask the Lord for forgiveness and we need to be more effective in following his instructions. Now, he told that man not to tell anyone but let me tell you what Matthew Henry said. There's no reason existing today why we should hesitate 
to spread the message of Christ and the praises of our Lord. You see, that was a temporary kind of instruction that was given, and it was for that one person. It's kind of like Jesus had said to the demons, don't tell about me. I'll tell about me when it's the right time. But then Jesus later gave us the commission, the great commission to tell the whole world about him and his salvation. Well, in this message in the gospel of Mark chapter one, we saw that Jesus had power over sickness and has defeated Satan and his demons. It's still true today. We need to trust in his power. And we saw that Jesus valued time in prayer. It wasn't just being alone, but time in prayer. We need to value and spend time in prayer. We also saw that Jesus was active in compassion. He didn't just feel for people and feel sorry for people. He actively made a difference in people's lives. We need to have an active compassion. I've tried to do that in some ways and I've failed in a lot of ways. But care about people, about their soul, their physical condition, their spiritual condition, their mental condition. And Jesus can address all those conditions and we can do it and minister to people in all those different ways. It may be that you have not yet trusted in Christ as Lord and Savior. I encourage you, I implore you, go to our website, centralalameda.org. Click on the connect button and connect with us. I'd love to help you spiritually, help you to grow in your walk with the Lord, to make a difference in your life. And I pray that uh, you can know the love of Jesus and his power and his compassion. May God bless you.